In today's video, I'll be sharing with you a CSS trick that you can implement if you're dealing with an excess of white space when you're working with code blocks in 7.1 using Fluid Engine with a widget that requires a script. If you're watching this, there's a very big chance that you know exactly what I'm referring to. So stay tuned because I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what to do about it. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. So if you're interested in fixing this problem in your current client project, make sure to keep on watching to learn how to make it happen. Okay, so here I have a 7.1 site and I'm currently working on a fluid engine section where I have a couple of elements, including two buttons. So let's go ahead and take a quick overview of the actual problem that we usually face when we're dealing with code blocks that include a script. And then I'm going to show you why that is happening and how we can solve the issue. So let's go ahead and take a look in here. I have a regular button up here that just says learn more. And then I went ahead and grabbed one of Acuity's book now or like schedule appointment buttons. And I'm using this one in here inside the code block. I did add a couple of additional custom CSS to this to be able to style it more similarly to this button just for everything to look good. But the CSS that I applied doesn't really interfere with the issue or helps the issue in any way. So again, this problem usually comes up or always comes up actually when you're using a script in here. And the problem actually has to do with the content that shows up inside the block and how the height of the block is interpreted by Fluid Engine. So the thing with Fluid Engine is that this works with grid CSS and grid CSS. I'm just going to go ahead and turn on here the grid so that we can see it better. Um, grid CSS is sort of like a very rigid system, which can be extremely helpful to be able to help us place things on the grid and not have them move somewhere we don't want them to. The problem is that because it's a rigid system, it also creates a couple of drawbacks. So one of them is basically the minimum height that the blocks are going to have depending on the content that is sitting within them. When we're adding blocks inside Fluid Engine, there is one part which is pretty much the blue outline that is creating the space where that block is going to sit in. And then the second part is actually the content that is going to be sitting inside that space. Now, the problem here is that the content within these blue outlines is always going to set a minimum height for those blocks. And the issue that comes up, particularly for code blocks, is that there is some extra content that gets added on edit mode that then gets removed when you save. And because of, like I said, the rigidity of how CSS grid works, this block, like the outline, simply cannot shrink down to match the height of the new content. So to make things a little bit more visual, let's go ahead and take a look here in the grid. So right now, this outline is as short as I can make it because that is the minimum height that it needs to have in order for me to be able to see all of the content that is in here, including these parts that only show up inside the editor. So right now, this whole block is occupying one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven rows inside the grid. So if I save this and I click on exit, what's going to happen is that this little block that I have in here or the content inside the block is going to sit in whichever space it needs to sit in based on the content inside the block. But the block itself, if we were to take a look here inside the inspect element tool and we take a look in here, let's go ahead and turn on the grid. We're going to see that if we stand over this block, the block still occupies those seven rows. Because like I said before, the minimum height of the whole block or this sort of column-ish block that we use in Fluid Engine is always going to be set based on the minimum height that the content inside the editing mode is carrying. So this is why when you have things flipped around, which is exactly what I want to do in here, if we have this button here and then we move this one upwards here and we pull this one down, what's going to happen is that once that extra content that we have inside the editing mode disappears, we're still going to have that block occupying those same seven rows 
but because the content has shrunken down, then we get this really big gap underneath it. And I'm pretty sure that if you've encountered this problem before, you've probably tried to solve it by trying to overlap a couple of things. So maybe here inside the editor, you decide that you want to move this button a little bit higher upward so that when things save, then you get a reduced gap in between those two elements. But then if you look at things on tablets, then you see that things are going to start overlapping and the approach just doesn't provide the solution that you want at all. So what I suggest here is doing things a little bit differently. Now understanding how these blocks are created or how the minimum height or if these blocks are set, what we can do is basically try to get rid of this extra content inside the editing mode so that we can actually shrink down the whole block so that it occupies the space that the content actually carries and not all of this extra bits that we have in here. So what we need to do is basically find these elements inside the inspect element tool to be able to target them via CSS and get rid of them. And in case you were wondering, yes, all of the elements inside the editor are things that we can potentially target via CSS. I would not say it's the best way to go about this. It is a pretty hacky solution, what I'm going to show you, but it's a solution nonetheless. And it's something that you can implement on your client side whenever you find it absolutely necessary. So let's say here, um, this one seems to be this element called SQS block status box which is wrapped inside this other element. And then, all right, this one is a little bit bigger. So it seems like this container is actually holding all of the parts of that embedded script part that we have in here, or this um, notification that we see here. And if we take a look down here, we can see that this is the button that I've embedded from Acuity. And then down here, we see an extra element called removed script that is just carrying that text of script disabled. Now, if we take a look here on the right side, just inspecting the notification banner here, we can see on the right side that this has already been targeted by Squarespace and it has a display property set to block. So what we can do is basically retarget it the same way, but set the display property to none. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and I'm going to keep that selector here on a different screen just to make sure that I already have it in place. Then what I'm going to do is select this element as well. And then we're going to go onto the custom CSS window to be able to use both selectors and then get rid of both things at the same time. So here, if we take a look at this other element, we can see that this one has been targeted through this other selector SQS block removed script, and it has been set to display block as well. So I'm going to grab the selector to be able to reuse it. And then we're going to set the display property to none as well. So I'm just going to paste that in here on a text node that I have open. And now I can go ahead and exit this. And we can move on to the custom CSS window. All right. So I'm going to grab both selectors and paste them in here. And because I want to style both things the same way, I just simply want to hide them. I'm going to go ahead and group the selectors. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a comma here, add a return because I like adding returns in here just to be able to see the selectors that I'm using a little bit better. And then I'm just going to set the display property to none. So once I do that, nothing is really going to happen on this screen because like I said, regardless of the content that we have, once we save the changes, the block itself is not really going to resize when we're working with fluid engine. So that means that once we have the code in place, we need to go back into edit mode. And then you're going to see that now the notification banner doesn't show up and the little text that we have underneath it doesn't show up either. And we're able to shrink down all of the space inside the code block and then put this back where we want. And then if we save this, and exit, we stop having that gap altogether. All right, my friend, and that's it. That's everything that you need to implement in order to solve this issue. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future content just like today's. And if you're not a member of the club already, make sure to check out the link in the description box below to learn how you can join us. I will see you next time.